HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. And welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to fill you in with what's happening in Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, we'll recap this year's Hopkinton Annual Town Meeting and Matt Clark has our HCAM Insider. Here's a look at night one of the Annual Town Meeting. On day one of Town Meeting, Articles 1 through 9 passed unanimously and the first debate of the night was over Article 10. The fiscal 2020 operating budget raised some debate over the underride. And given that the town has had many surprise expenses in the past year, and given that nobody is going to get a tax rebate as a result of any underride, I submit, Mr. Moderator, that the town should have a voice in whether this proposed underride is prudent. So therefore, I propose an amendment or a uh, I propose that we vote separately on the on the underride because what it says up there is appropriation committee recommends approval and That's, that still holds but they just said they didn't vote on it <laughs> they didn't know it was in there so how can they recommend so I, I, and again I, I think well, the I, reason I'm up here is because I think that's a valid question if hold on then hold on a second Mr. Manning would you address uh, the, the position of the Appropriations Committee with respect to Article 10 as it is currently constructed. They said they weren't aware of it. So we voted on it essentially uh, they voted to, approve, to approve the operational budget right. and we also did see today that it, there was a non-binding part to have a underwrite. So since it's non-binding and there's still a vote it really has no overall impact on the operational budget. So we could have revoted it, we could have discussed it, but we don't have a particular position on the underwrite itself. Our position is approving the budget. Mr. Moderator, I, I, as the maker of the motion, I would accept uh, instead to simply delete the underwrite section, the non-binding underwrite part of the budget. There was a motion to change language regarding the underwrite. The motion passed and the $92 million plus town budget for fiscal year 2020 was then voted through. $92.7 million. Article 11, fiscal year 2020 revolving fund spending limits. Articles 11 through 20 passed unanimously, while Article 21, the purchase of a multi-purpose municipal tractor for $177,000 raised some debate. Francis D. Young, 3 Doyle Lane. Uh, John, is this incremental to the two existing blowers that you mentioned previously? Through the moderator, yes it is. And just what's the rationale for adding a third? Have we been, have we been neglecting because we don't have the ability or capacity or is this kind of used to be a long-term replacement for one of the other two? Uh, through the moderator, we currently remove snow from a network of approximately 17 miles of sidewalk. Um, it takes roughly 8 to 16 hours with the two vehicles that we have. And we have to take operators that have been out working for hours or perhaps days working on the roads. So we take them out and we put them in these two vehicles. It takes 8 to 16 hours. With a third vehicle, we'll be able to clear the snow and provide safe travel on the sidewalks in a much more efficient and quick manner. The article then passed the majority. Article 22 and Article 53 both passed. Article 53 was moved up since it was related to Article 22. Article 23, the sidewalk master plan, raised a whole lot of debate due to the proposal to construct a sidewalk along West Main Street. In lanes, we have several things going on right there. We have a right-hand, we have two right-hand turn lanes, then we have 
an exit that's supposed to merge into, and you're not supposed to make a left, but they always want to merge right in front of Cumbies. They come dashing down and merge ahead. So that's fine, I don't care. I'm old, I, <laughs> I can afford five minutes. But you can't afford to have people hit there, and I do think that that's what it's going to lead to. There's not, simply not enough space in the camp of the hill and the desire of kids, young people driving, people driving home who can't spend, <laughs> they come up behind me now. It's a dis I think it's a disaster waiting to happen. The article failed the required two-thirds majority with 124 voting for and 103 voting against the article. The final article of the night, Article 24, School Bus Parking Lot, raised some debate. The article would allocate $300,000 to construct a school bus parking lot at town-owned 90 Hayden Row. At the middle school and now the high school for several years, I think this redesign is entirely warranted. Um, the parking lot improvement, um, getting the school buses out of the flow of the parent traffic would be a, a great benefit. The additional money that's being asked for, 300000 according to the numbers that were just shown, which are, I assume, the most current numbers, would be paid for in three years. Um, this seems to me to be a great investment of the town's money, and I would support it. Thanks. The article did pass the required two-thirds majority by standing vote, with 146 voting for and 60 voting against. On night two of the Hopkinton Annual Town Meeting, a number of big topics were discussed, including community preservation recommendations. Here's a look. Day two of town meeting featured much debate. Article 25, purchase of a ladder truck was first on the agenda. Ability based on their years of selfless service. I look around, I see Mr. Manning, excuse me, Mr. Sestari, Chief Lee, and I put uh, Chief Slammon in that category as well. He, uh, he and his uh, deputy Miller do their homework, and if they came up here and asked for 10 trucks, I'd say, okay, I believe it. I'm glad it's only one, Steve, but... Um, <laughs> Just, I know the work that you put in, the diligence, and um, I support this because you're proposing it. Thank you. After some questions, the article passed by an overwhelming majority, 256 to 11. Article 27, Town Hall Basement Renovation, raised debate. It's for file storage, it's for a kitchen, it's for an office. That isn't what the article says. It just says under the direction of the town manager, and I will not vote for this, and I urge my fellow citizens not to vote for it as well. Thank you. The article would fail the two-third required majority with 175 voting for and 112 against. Article 26, 28, 29, and 30 all passed. Article 31 was the next big debate, mostly over the dog park at 66B Fruit Street. Um, is, there's a $250,000 grant that we had received before for another location, um, but, but we uh, did not move forward with that location. We picked a place that was uh, at, at uh, Fruit Street because it was a little further away from where residences are. Um, because people had concerns that, that, that were abutters. Uh, so th this location is uh, most likely going to be just as you enter the parking area for the fields, maybe a 50 or 100 or 70 or a couple hundred yards before that is about where the location would be. Um, again, from a funding perspective, $250,000 grant that we um, would not be able to access any portion of this $150,000 unless we got that grant. Despite a motion to separate the dog park from the article, all parts of the article would eventually pass. Article 32, car wash use, raised heavy debate. They ranged from traditional office buildings to research centers, hospitals, all the way down to asphalt plants and hazardous waste processing. We took in everything we could think of. Car washes finished near the bottom in job creation, high-skilled jobs, tax revenue, and uh, bringing 
other business or driving business to other in-town businesses. It was near the bottom of all 50. The article failed the two-third majority with 226 for and 117 against. After Article 33 passed unanimously, Article 34 self-storage facility raised a whole lot of debate. Um, I'd also like to say we do have self-storage in town. I go to it regularly as a member of the Hopkinton Little League Board. It's 750 feet away, right over there, across the street. We've been using it in Little League for years. There is plenty of self-storage around. As I made my rounds to the car washes, I also stopped at self-storage facilities. <laughs> All of them, every single one that I visited has space. Every single one. And most have signs that say first month free, which means they're desperate for customers. Article 34 failed the required two-third majority. After Article 35 passed by an overwhelming majority, Article 36, Osma District, was heavily debated. The goal of the article was to remove the age restriction on the units to comply with state regulations. Concerns about more students being added to the school system were raised. And I've sold many over 55 homes. And they are mainly for people who are downsizing, so who have come from a really nice house and want fewer bedrooms, but they want other rooms. So it may only have two bedrooms, but it's got a den and an office and a loft and a finished basement. And my experience has been that if you remove the limitation for children, they will absolutely become multi-generational homes. So you will be getting children in the school systems because it will be grandparents, parents, and children. And there may be just two bedrooms, but there are lots of other rooms that can be bedrooms. The article failed after it was determined that Article 37 may be a better solution for the Osma district and the town to comply with state regulations. I attended, attended the planning meetings on this and I have heard all the good arguments here, but we need a solution. And we need one that's affordable for our schools, our uh, people who live in the town, for the people who are going to buy into this development, and for the people who need affordable housing. So once, I will just state, I urge you to vote no on 36 and yes on 37. Thank you. Article 37 keeps the age restriction in the Osma district in place while allowing the planning board to approve the creation of the required number of affordable housing units elsewhere in Hopkinton by the developer. The article passed unanimously. Article 38, which was essentially a language change, passed by an overwhelming majority to close out day two of the 2019 annual town meeting. Don't forget, you can watch Town Meeting in its entirety on our YouTube page. Coming up next, we'll take a look at night three of the annual Town Meeting. And Matt Clark has our HCAM Insider. Stay tuned. HCAM programming is supported by our viewers. Thank you. And by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. What would you do if someone gave you a television station? Would you run a camera? Host your own programs? Would you like to be a director or edit your own shows? Or maybe be a big time producer or cover your local sports? Well, your station is ready for action. Start your media adventures with the workshop at HCAM. From setting lights and directing talent to editing, HCAM makes quality programs and teaches you to do the same. If you're interested in having fun and making a difference in the community, why not do it on TV? Join our crew and get your own piece of the action. Welcome back to HCAM News. Night three of the annual town meeting was certainly a long one. Topics included changing Board of Selectmen to Select Board and preserving the Claflin House at 76 Main Street. Here's a look. On day three of the Hopkinton annual town meeting, there was a lot of debate about Article 42, which was a citizen's petition for a one-year growth restriction what it's proposing to do seems to overlap, if not, if not substantially overtake, the role of the planning board. Um, planning boards are supposed to plan for the future growth, development, and preservation of a community's resources. And I, I would question uh, the, uh, the proponents here, are the, is this growth study committee supposed to work in tandem with the planning board, or is it supposed to take over, under this bylaw, those responsibilities? Um, secondly, 
the idea with setting a limit of twelve building permits which is substantially lower than we would expect is going to effectively mean that there's going to be a rush to the office once this article would be signed off by the attorney general i think that's probably going to add vantage uh... big you know big uh... developers or landowners who are appropriately ready to do that to the detriment of other members of the town who may be wanting to to uh... to put a building permit together but can't have all the resources ready to go on day one the article would ultimately fail the two-third majority article forty three was to change the board of selectmen to select board this article also drew lots of reaction what we are talking about today is the evolution already that has happened in the business world we see it also across our state it does make a difference from all of our diversity and inclusion research that we have done and our implicit biases that we have it does make a difference so i implore you tonight to please vote for this article thank you very much thank you the article passed a standing vote with 258 for and 53 against article 46 attempted to make 76 main street a historic district to prevent demolition the claflin house and all the property behind it can certainly have a wonderful new and vibrant productive commercial use in our downtown we need that and would encourage it throughout hopkinton examples are everywhere of blending the old with the new to meet modern needs while preserving the town's character the school admin building at 97 Hayden Row, the new library, offices at 17 Main, renovation of the 1894 old high school, and the renovation and expansion of many downtown residences prove this. The article passed a standing vote 287 to 70. Article 47 changed the maximum demolition delay from six months to 18 months will allow them to get all their ducks in an order before that last resort happens and if it doesn't happen then we're not we don't lose a proper a house a building and they don't either if they're going to ultimately sell the property because they don't don't want to do with it what they were going to they at least have a house on it the article passed a clear majority article 51 also drew heavy debate the article attempted to allow the selectman and town manager to negotiate for a few different parcels of land to build a parking lot. If I can take a minute, I think there's a tremendous amount of confusion here on what's going on. I'm a little bit dismayed that these, are, that these three parcels are put into the same article. I wish that did not happen. Uh, we've been working with Town Hall for quite some time, and if I can direct your attention to there. The two mansion houses in the front are not going to be touched. We have already worked with the Historic District Commission and we are going to be putting some parking between the buildings and on either side of them. That is for the use of the current occupants of that building. Directly behind the building you'll see a paved parking lot with about 32 or 33 spaces. That is the 22,500 square feet that we're proposing to sell to the town and the green space behind it would house six duplexes or 12 condominiums. Town meeting voted to allow the town to purchase six Walcott Street and a parcel of land at 25 and 35 Main Street, but declined 10 Walcott Street, 14 Main Street, and 0 Main Street. For Article 52, no action was recommended which passed the article 54 and 55 also passed unanimously to close out the 2019 Hopkinton annual town meeting. A whole lot of programming is coming up on the HCAM channels. Standing by to tell you all about it is Matt Clark with our HCAM Insider. Hello everyone and welcome to this week's edition of the HCAM Insider. I'm Mike Florida filling in for Matt Clark this week and I'm here to tell you what's happening this week on HCAM. On Friday, May 10th at 5 o'clock p.m., local artists, poets, and musicians gather to share their poetry and music on a new episode of Wake Up and Smell the Poetry. I was driving down Main Street with only two stops. Got a dollar store and a barber shop 
At the edge of town, at the side of the tracks, it's where hobos go when they come back. On Monday, May 13th at 7 o'clock p.m., the Hoppington Planning Board meeting will air live on HCAM TV. On Tuesday, May 14th at 7 o'clock p.m., the Hoppington Select Board meeting will air live on HCAM TV. And at 7.30 p.m., the Hoppington Conservation Committee meeting will air live on YouTube. On Wednesday, May 15th at 7 o'clock p.m., the HCA brings us John Fertensi and his one-man show on a new HCAM special. And at 7 o'clock p.m. on HCAM Ed, the HMS Drama Club presents their spring musical production of Into the Woods on a brand new HCAM Ed special. And on Thursday, May 16th at 7 o'clock p.m., the Hopkinton School Committee meeting will air live on HCAM Ed. And also on HCAM Ed, the Hillers Baseball vs. Millis game will air. If you want to know more about all of the HCAM shows before they air, then head over to HCAM.TV slash connect, where you can sign up for our HCAM Insider newsletter. Or if you want to know more about what's happening in Hopkinton, you can sign up for our daily news updates. That's all for this week's Insider. I'm Mike Bologna. Thanks for watching. Thank you, Matt. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget, you can stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. Be sure to head over to our website for the latest happenings in our community and check out the Hopkinton community calendar to take a look at upcoming events in town. If you have a Hopkinton-related video, photo, or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. As always, thanks for watching HCAM News. And remember, town election is Monday, May 20th at Hopkinton Middle School. Take care and we'll talk to you again soon. On Friday, April 24th, Hillers baseball took on Westwood. Bottom of the third, Hillers trailing 4-1. Steve Simos got a rally going. Line up and the pitch, and this is it. High in the air, over to center field. And that ball was crushed. It's going back, back to the wall. And that's gone. A home run for Steven Simos. It's a 4-2 ball game. He crushed that ball. I didn't think it would get it, get out as soon as he hit the ball, but kept nope. going, going, going. I think the wind helped a little bit. Might have, but wasn't a cheapie. That's about 360 feet out where that outfielder was. That's the deepest part of the ballpark. So I was pitching yesterday. There's a swing, and that's hit in the gap in right center field. That's going to go all the way to the wall. Galley turns first and comes into second base with a double. Thanks for chipping in on play-by-play, -play, Larry. Well, it got, caught in the middle. it got caught in the middle there. Sorry about that. That'll make it a 4-3 to three game. That was on and set to deal. Gets a piece of this one, hit in the air over to left field. That ball was crushed to the fence. And that is going to be a long base hit there. And a run will score to tie the game. Robbie Pagley, a loca. Go ahead, run is just 90 feet away. Gets a piece of this one up the right side. That's going to get through the gap. And the Hillers take the 5-4 lead as Pagliuca comes around to score. An RBI single for Kester. It was 5-4 heading to the top of the fourth. But Westwood put together an eight-run inning. And they would end up taking the game 15-11. The Hillers had a good response on Monday, April 29th when they took on Millis. It was scoreless heading into the bottom of the first, but it wouldn't stay that way for long. 
Big games this week for the Hillers as this is hit in the air to right field. It'll fall in. Simos comes around to score. It's an RBI single for Drew Rancatori. 2-0 Hillers. Kelly. And he gets a piece of this one to center field. It goes way back towards the fence. And that'll drop in. One run is in to score. RBI double for Connor Kelly. He absolutely tattooed that ball. It ended up being a seven-run inning for the Hillers. Alex Barker Hook added on in the bottom of the second. Set to deliver. And he gets a piece of this one over to center field. It goes. See you later. Home run. Alex Barker Hook goes yard. It's 9-0 Hillers. A two-run homer gave the Hillers a 9-0 lead despite a bit of a surge in the later innings by Millis. Hopkinton would walk away with the 12-5 win. Alex Barker Hook and Drew Rancatori both contributed a pair of hits, runs, and RBIs as the Hillers improved to 7-2 with the win. Hillers went on to capture a 6-5 road win on Wednesday, May 1st in Medfield and currently stand at eight wins and two losses on the season.